All right, Matt, going live on video. Stand by for audio. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So before I get into this gentleman that we're bringing on today, and we're going to be talking probably about some more healthy entrepreneurial related content, definitely around lifestyle, uh, because he and I met in a very interesting way. I just want to remind you guys quick, we're recording this in the holiday season, the end of 2018. And whether it's this time of year, any time of year, podcasts are powerful. I've coached many people on this, right? Not just my show, but all shows. So if you can, please share this content because the guy you're about to learn from is going to drop some good knowledge on you. And the knowledge is only as powerful as as much as it's shared. So again, I try to remind people more and more to please share podcasts when you're inspired by them, motivated by them, or you just learn a ton of content. So without further ado, this gentleman, he and I met in Philadelphia. Well, we got connected through another gentleman. Shout out to Kevin Cottrell. And uh, we're, we've been trying to catch up for a while. I'll let him try and see if he can remember how long it's been. But he's a student. He's an entrepreneur and a teacher of optimal human health. That's right, people. We love health on this show. He's also the founder of RA Optics. I'll let him dig into the branding, how to properly pronounce it. It's mostly Ra, exactly, but I'll let him explain that more. Uh, but you guys know how much I love Blue Blocker technology. Shout out to Jack Cruz, Dr. Jack Cruz back in episode 51, Kevin Cottrell, Jack Cruz. And now uh, this gentleman, we met at some, I'll just call it millionaire mindset related activities surrounded by powerful influencers like Tony Robbins and many others. And uh, He's, he's also got some of his own blue light blocking glasses to share with us today, too. So without further ado, Matt Maruka, man, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so it's Ra. It's Ra. On Ra, like the sun god. You know what it is? Wasn't Ra, I mean, we have an age gap here. I'm Gen X. You're, mil you're, you're millennial, right? I am millennial. I'm Gen Z. Gen Z, that's right. See, there's yeah. so many Gens now. doesn't matter. The purpose of this show is, since I am Gen X, I'm trying to get back to the next generations, and we want to be the purpose of knowledge and wisdom, you'll appreciate this, is what good is the acquisition if you're not passing it on, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how old somebody is. It matters about the unique knowledge they have to share. And I know you have a lot to, to reinforce today. So, uh, but anyway, I just, I just geek out. I just geek out. I'm glad totally. you and I are catching up. So Totally. Actually, real quick on the whole catching up spontaneity, we literally booked this, what, 24, 48 hours ago? Yeah, like 24 hours ago. <laughs> just like, hey, Carpe was, DM, man. Yeah, I actually had your business card that you gave me uh, at the Tony Robbins event, and it was in one bag and then the next bag. And for some reason, there's things that I just never, like, act on that I just, you know, and I was like, I'm not going to throw this card away. I'm just going to keep pushing it off. But then I was like, wait, I just need to email him so we can just do this show because it'd be really cool. But everything, it tends to work in the right time. So I'm sure there's a reason why. And you're back here in Pennsylvania, right? I am. I'm in Narvath, PA, just there in you go. 40 degree. Well, it's probably like 50 something at this point because the sun's really. I was going to say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we had an un unusual warm up for this time of year. We're recording this on December 23rd. I have no problem time stamping these shows because I hear it was like 48. I just got back from a CrossFit workout and I was upset because th this workout didn't have running. Because the sun was out, it's 48, and it feels amazing right now. You're, for, the, for the audio listeners, if you see this on YouTube, you know, Matt's hanging out shirtless, hair's down, in all his uh, surfer look glory, uh, <laughs> <laughs> embracing the rock uh, brand, so to speak here, right? The sun god. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's exactly what I'm doing. So. But generationally, hold on a second. This is where I was going with this. There was a cartoon that I used to watch as a kid. You know what I'm talking about? And Rob was one of name one of the characters. I don't know. I don't know which, which cartoon this one is. It involved ah, uh, I think it was Thundercats. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. Oh wow, man! All right, well, I gotta find that on Google. But hey, <laughs> let, let's let's catch people up though. So why did you choose Rob? Let's go ahead, just dive right in because obviously there's a lot of meaning behind that. Yeah, let's do it. So um, basically, I was thinking about a company that. You know, well, I knew I was going to sell blue blockers. That that kind of came through uh, Luke Story, a podcaster who I did an episode with, and uh, you know, it's pretty cool that the episode I did with him is his most downloaded episode, and he's interviewed over two hundred of very interesting people. But the reason I think so is because it's all of I can share, and I do share, and I will in this interview the inter information that Jack Cruz teaches to people. However, it's in an applicable format. So it's like you were saying, making it more approachable. That's kind of like the, it's great. You know, he's almost like a father to me, like a, an uncle, basically, you know, I had Thanksgiving at his house 
uh, just a few weeks ago. Oh, and that's awesome, man. I knew you guys were close. Yeah, pretty, we're pretty tight. So, you know, he's really been like a, a strong mentor to me and helped me improve my life in so many ways just beyond health. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about it the other day as my mom was talking about something, just thinking about like, why do I think this way? Why am I so financially, you know, responsible? Like I'm going to be really smart about fi finances to the point where I'm thinking about financial freedom and s stability when I'm 19 years old. It's like, that's from Jack. Like, that's what Jack told me the first time I met him in person, like make your money now so that you can do whatever you want. And so it wasn't just the health stuff. It's like the dude's a, a smart guy. So anyway, though, um, I took Wait, that as an actual professional title these days. I mean, uh, neurosurgeon and the CEO of optimized life or the president of the cruise longevity farm. Wow. So again, there's been new, some new titles added into that. I yeah. obviously knew he was a neurosurgeon, but the, some of that new branding, dude, yeah. we do have to catch up, man. He's been well, busy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he, the optimized life is just the, the company he uses to teach, uh, you know, through which he teaches his information about health podcasts. Uh, he does like webinars and blogs. And it's, again, the content's kind of messy. It's hard to approach for some people. But the thing is, like, it's like a genius doing his best to just put the information out. And it's up to someone like me to really, again, take it forward and learn it, I think, and share it in, you know, ways that can reach larger audiences. That's like um, we're doing today. Exactly. And that, that's what it's all about. So basically, though, uh, the raw started when Luke Story wanted a pair of custom made blue blockers like I had my friends had a lot of people in the cruise community were digging into with these special tints that block the right frequencies of light. And it was really complicated. And it was just like, I had been thinking for several, several uh, years, well, two years, I mean, for me, it's that's a long time because um, <laughs> I'm 19. So <laughs> for two years about how I could make money off of all this health stuff I learned that really changed my life. And then when it became so obvious after reading a few uh, Silicon Valley books, going back to the entrepreneurship, like the lean startup by Eric or Adam Reese, no, Eric Reese, yeah. uh, zero to one, Peter Thiel. And then the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Those Everybody books, knows Tim Ferriss. There you go. Yeah. And those three books were enough to, get me thinking, okay, how do I run my own business from anywhere in the world? How do I do something that's different and going to have a, a cool impact and, and be able to stick out and survive? And three, if I do start, how am I going to approach it? And that was the lean startup. But so anyway, I had the right mindset. And then when the opportunity became clear that Luke Story wanted custom blue blockers, a lot of other people might too. And it's really challenging. I bought the gear to tint the lenses with the proper tint and just started offering the service, just making it easier, branding it. Oh, were you doing the uh, were you doing the adhesive style tinting on existing glasses? Well, it's not. Yeah, basically, you need plastic uh, lenses. Almost all lenses are made of plastic and polymers today. Right. So you need these specific type of uh, plastic polymer lenses to be able to tint. So yeah. I couldn't just accept people's standard glasses because usually they would have these anti glare, anti reflective right. coat that would basically prevent the tint from adhering. But so I would get, I would have people send glasses that didn't have that, that uh, anti-glare, anti-reflective coating. And then we would put the, uh, you know, we would apply the tint to the lenses and ship, ship them back to people. And then eventually people were, you know, just wondering if we could just offer some standard styles. And that's when it became clear that what started as Matt's custom blue blockers needed to move on as its own brand. Cause we had a line of products now. Yep. So essentially what I did was, uh, I thought about a name for a long time and I have a good, good friend in Florida. Who's one of a, yeah. Some screen yeah. sharing. There we go. Thank people. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that's, that's a website actually I built about a year ago, over a year ago on the beach in Croatia. Um, <laughs> when, and I'm real quick, ladies and gentlemen, but he's going to dig into that raw optics. So R A O P T I C S dot I O is what I'm sharing for the YouTube watchers. But uh, I love the fact you're showing a pair of Ray-Bans here because that's a great style sunglass. So Exactly. So it was a really nice pair that we did. It was part of our custom tending service where people could select their own frames or, you know, they could send their own frame, which we're currently, we've currently paused, but I haven't even updated the site, although it's updated in the shop. But the reason why is because I'm working on a whole new setup that's going to really uh, uh, make the process much more streamlined to the extent where, um, Basically, anyone who goes to our site, even if they don't know a thing about it, they're going to be able to really learn a lot. I mean, they're already learning a lot now, but we're going to make it even higher level. Uh, well, let me tell you real quick. You'll appreciate this. Yeah, and I want to make sure people understand this. We're digging, digging deep in just one powerful brand because this is Matt's brand. But it's not like this stuff doesn't exist. And I want to make sure I got this in early so you understood. 
when I had Jack on, this was, hold on, I got to do some screen share on that. I, I, have to, I found the date. Hold on, I had to bring him up on the site. So let me bring this up for the video watchers. Because to this date, Jack is still my most downloaded episode ever with, I believe, uh, you know, Cottrell was right behind him. But it was episode 51, way back on February 2017. So, um, and we called that the your, your mitochondria and biohacking with Jack Cruz. We really dug into the health of the cell, mitochondria, and then obviously we really geeked out on blue blockers, the impact on your sleep health, eye health, everything. Um, yep. But thanks to him, and you'll appreciate this. Don't worry, I'm going to try your stuff too. But I've got 50% styles from one guy that I've had on my shows, and this is one guy, he only sells them on Amazon. Uh, he's actually an eye doctor. Uh, I think it's I Love Cares. He, he gives back to kids overseas and helps people see better in, in poor countries. Cool. And then I've got all different – yeah, I might, I might be a little bit of a geek here. Uh, you'll appreciate this. There's some aviators. So oh, yeah. I went from not understanding how to get blue blocker glasses to now I've got one, two, three, four. I have five different pairs here, and I've already given two other pairs that I already had away because it's just like if I come across them and people send me pairs, I'm, I want to make sure once I teach somebody about it and they're interested, please use them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I figured exactly. you'd appreciate so that. We'll get you a pair. We'll get that hooked up. Um, yeah. No, it's, it's cool. I just think it's important that people understand that you, you have your brand, right? And then you got people like Swanick Sleep and you got people like I Love, I love and it's cool because it's gotten cool. It, has, it is getting cool. It's right? Getting and cool. I'm, I'm excited by that. Yeah, that's, that's what the new website we're working towards, some new styles. We're, we're working towards personally branded frames. I've had to get, you know, just upping my uh, manufacturing game and all that stuff, which is really <laughs> because I never came into this thinking I'd be a businessman in the end, but that's, that's what I'm born to be is, is a guy who, who figures out something people want and, and offers it or that, that people would benefit from because a lot of people don't know they want this. Well, but you'll appreciate this. Too. I've uh, learned uh, one of my mentors years ago, and I, I think it's been published in books and blogs, everything else, the classic statement of, you know, what is it, how do you define an entrepreneur? What is the definition of an entrepreneur? And before I throw you mine, like, how would you quickly define an entrepreneur? What is their purpose? An entrepreneur, I would say, is someone who takes advantage of opportunities that haven't yet been capitalized in various markets and situations. Like, it could be anything, you know, if you're, you could be an entrepreneur out in nature, you know, like you go and well, it probably involves some type of commerce, but yeah, you, you go and you find the water that's the purest water and then you trade it for the, the cattle or who knows. I mean, you get what I'm saying. Well, yeah, so basically, let's, 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 let, we'll just simplify it from one of my mentors. His exact quote was, listen, an entrepreneur is somebody that takes a problem and finds a, finds a solution and a, a way to resolve it and then generates income from it, right? Like, I'm, hey, you got a problem? Cool. I've got a solution. Just pay me and I'll help you. So, I mean, I think a lot of people forget that that's how simple it can be. And it's okay to make money, right? Like, I have a problem. I can't figure out how to fix it. You can, and you can help me. Cool. I need to have skin in the game, right? So, I need to pay you to address my issue, right? Totally. So, yeah, that makes sense. And it's, people, it's people, people complicate entrepreneurship too much. <laughs> it's as simple as the taco stands where I would buy my, like, my breakfast down in Mexico. Like, my problem is that I want breakfast and I'm hungry. Their solution is that they have the best tasting tacos in the freaking world. And they're right there. And they're right there and they cost like 75 cents a piece. So like I just eat a ton of them. And uh, then it was funny to expand on this. I had a friend who runs, well, I do have a friend who's, who's also friends with Jack who runs a, a big, big telecom company in New York City, but he only does fiber optic cabling, none of the wireless stuff because he knows the health effects of it, all the Wi-Fi and these kinds yep. of things. So he just lays fiber optics and he's preparing to have the solution for when people realize the wireless is a problem, that everything can be hardwired through high speed fiber optics. But Oh, I've, it's funny, you know, I can geek out on that because yeah. I was in uh, telecom and oh, IT. Seriously? Yeah. So uh, like I've, thanks to Jack, I do still have Wi-Fi in this house, yeah. but after Jack, I went out and bought extra power strips uh, for my office where the routers were at the time. Yeah. And then every night before bed, I just flipped the switch yeah. and every, all the modem and the router are shut down when I go to sleep. And within, within probably two months, actually probably less than that, I, I noticed an immediate difference because oh, yeah. he, he said, he's like, I challenge you not to notice an impact on your sleep health. Yeah, exactly. And it's, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to see if I can find, um, 
what this guy Shrihari, his yeah, this guy friend of mine. He, he I can look it up if you need help. That's that's well, the beauty of me. I, I got a whole command center here. <laughs> what it is is it's something you wouldn't be able to look this up because what he told me was he when he was getting into business, he went back and read some of the old classic business books, like from the eighteen hundreds. Like I don't even know what the books were. He said he would uh, send them to me to read, hmm. but seriously, like old school, because he said in these books people approach things in such a simple basic fashion and he said that what he learned is that every business basically consists of like um a sales team so sales marketing fabrication and like accounting like there was basically only four key roles or maybe there was a fifth that i'm missing but when i went to the taco stand where i was eating breakfast i looked at it i was like all right how does this this is a business so where do i see okay when i walk down the street and there's you know like four of them on each side of the path and they're all you know like trying to get me in that's the marketing and then i come in and i'm ready to buy then there's the sales team trying to the marketing and sales are kind of the same people and then there's fabrication where they make my tacos and then the lady who who collects my money who's probably the same who was marketing and and sometimes it's all the same person Exactly. Right. Sometimes they'll even cook the tacos. In the, be- in the beginning, you have it. And then maybe there's a family that built that grows up around it and they just have a kick butt stand. So next thing you know, the kids are old enough and they're going to start going out and trying to pull you into the stand. Now, now we've outsourced or brought on a sales and marketing team to help with that. Exactly. So the founder, the owner of the stand can now focus on the art of the fabrication and ensuring a great quality product. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty cool. So Anyhow, though, this was just the all part of the mindset of business, entrepreneurship. And then it was just clear when, when Luke Story won a custom blue blockers and I could do this, I just went for it. Now, the thing was, when we started offering our own product with what I believe and still believe are the most attractive frame styles that are out there, and then the lens technology is current, the current lens technology we're using is matched by this company in Australia called Blue Blocks and another one called Rhythm Optics. They're basically doing the same thing on the lenses, although we were first, but you know, so are they are they actually literally molding the blue block frequency lenses from scratch like the no, tint? And so that's not how they're doing it. They're what they're everyone everyone is still right now doing uh, tinted lenses, but basically tinted lenses. But the thing is, the blue blocking um, pigment it's the tint you bo- it's basically the lens. This plastic lens goes okay. into the liquid solution at like basically 210 degrees Fahrenheit, so just below boiling for about two hours. So it's a coating. It is a, well, it's a coating, but it actually molecularly bonds. To bonds, the yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. it, it becomes part of the lens. There's a, there's a heat transfer process going on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a yeah. chemical. This goes back to like thermodynamics. <laughs> yeah, it's chemically bonding to the lens and it doesn't come off. Uh, unless, like you, you, you really can't get it off the lens. It's very hard. But the cool thing is what you just said, my new lens technology that we're going to be launching with our new new site, rawoptics.com, hopefully in a couple of weeks, although it just seems to, this, this process is, it's long because I'm, I'm a, a one-man team. Well, a two, two, two three-man team right now working on this. Point being, we're going to have lens technology that, that we've just innovated basically with a lens manufacturer that has the blue blocking pigment inside of the lens from the, like the original process. Nice. So, so then all you got to do is just put the lens in the frame and you're good to go. Exactly. And yeah. then if there's a prescription, they can just uh, take the lens. That's See, that's huge. Blocked. The prescription piece, I think, is big. Um, I, I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago, and, and he's a future customer of yours because he does get it. But he's like, how do I... He's like, I, 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 he's, he, he likes wearing physical glasses. He doesn't like contacts. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I need, he's like, do, do they make a snap on option? Like, you know how some, some, some glass companies, you can get the snap on sunglasses, right? Oh, well, yeah. I, I, thanks to Jack, I don't wear sunglasses anymore. Like yeah. I, when I, I travel a lot driving and I, I've, my eyes have gotten stronger. I have no oh, problem. I mean, yeah, I might have to flip the visor down. That's fine. Big glare. It's coming through glass is bad for you anyway because there's more blue and no UV. Yeah. But roll the window down always when the sun's on the window side and just let it hit you direct, dude. It's the best. Oh, yeah. I, I've, I'm lo- I've loved it. The past, like I said, since, well, since I aired that February 2017, I think I recorded in January. So, oh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Like, I have four pairs of really nice sunglasses still sitting in my center console I never took out of the car. Great. Uh, because when I was firefighting out west years ago, I mean, that was the thing. Like our safety glasses were our sunglasses. Yeah. Um, so while we're hiking in the mountains, fighting wildfires and stuff, like we had cool sunglasses because that's what we, that's what we use for our safety glasses. Yeah, totally. So I spent a lot of money on those. <laughs> yeah, totally. 
Um, that's interesting. Side note, I was just – I live in Malibu, so speaking of wildfires, there was just a pretty rough one out there. Oh, yeah. Not like the campfire, though. That was, that was my old life. Really? I, I was on one of the elite hotshot crews. Seriously? Were you in um, Southern California? I, I was well, – hotshot. So I served in 2010, 2011. Actually, that belt buckle back there is from my hotshot crew. You have to serve for two years at a hotshot crew to earn – their logoed belt buckle and it has a serial number on it and it's tracked in the cruise history. There's a lot of history. I was on one of the oldest crews in the nation. It was called the Pleasant Valley Hotshots. We were based out of Arizona, uh, but we were U S forest service. So we were federal underneath the department of interior, but hotshots are shipped everywhere where all the big stuff is. Like we're, we're like the, there's a movie that came out this past year uh, about the 19 hotshots that were burned over in Arizona in 2013, the fallen Granite mountain hotshots. And I knew them. We served alongside of each other. So they unfortunately passed away June 30th, 2013. And as you've seen from living in California, the fires can get bad. So that's the, that's the worst case scenario. Anyway, uh, yeah, that was my life. Uh, we, we went all, I was stationed. I mean, the, what, 2010, my rookie year, we actually got stationed. It was cool. One day or one day we got to stay in Ocean Beach. I was like, what? We, we're, we're hot- we called it hoteling up. I was like, we're hoteling up? In, in Ocean Beach in San Diego, I was, I was like, "Yeah, let's do this." That was my first time going to San Diego, so wow. uh, kind of I cool. love that. So yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty sweet. Um, and I just thought that was kind of interesting because I had my that was my first wildfire experience in Malibu, and everything around the little place I've been staying at was totally burned, but the the place itself survived. It's so- interesting how it ends up going down. Sometimes Mother Nature works to your favor. Sometimes, like the campfire, it does not. Um, mm. 2011. We fought a, a fire that stretched across Arizona into New Mexico. It was literally 1 million acres. Seriously? Oh, yeah. We didn't lose one structure, though. Wow. So, I mean, it's, that, that, those parts of Arizona and New Mexico, and New Mexico were more spread out than, than the concentration of California. Yeah. So it was easier for us to get reinforced. I mean, we, it, was, it was all hands on deck. There was people coming in from Cal Fire. We had people coming from the East Coast that were like lower level people to handle it. Like hot shots, we, you're sent into all the the hardcore crap. So, uh, wow. there's only, there's only 105 hotshot crews in the nation last time I checked. So, wow. and they're 20 man crews. So think about it. There's that's only 2000. I mean, wow. Cal fire as an apartment in California, you guys have thousands of firefighters, uh, wow. but they're not all hotshots. So, yeah. um, it was, it was, it was a very, I'm, I'm writing a book about it now. So it's, um, about the less life lessons learned, the lifestyle components. Jack and I talked about it because, he, he, we talked about how healthy, even though I was physically beat up from that job, we talked about how healthy the lifestyle was of me being in the outdoors all the time and hiking in the mountains, even though I had 40 pounds of gear in my pack and a chainsaw on my shoulder and you didn't shower for two weeks. Like, you know, I'm sweating out, but my skin is absorbing back in the vitamin D, right? Because a lot of people don't know you're, you actually excrete vitamin D. So it allows my skin to absorb it back in. I'm in mother nature and sun and and mother nature like it was uh, we camped under the stars every single night when we as hot shots you, you weren't allowed to use a tent because that was lame <laughs> wow. so i figured you'd appreciate all that because he's like that lifestyle was harsh but he's like if you didn't have those components you're you would have been more physically beat up than you were i mean i did have a by the end of the fire season you're beat up i mean it's you have adrenal fatigue and everything else because you're going 16 hours a day for two weeks straight on a fire and then you get checked off and you have to go for two days of rest and recovery. And then you're right back at it again. And you do that all summer long. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing that we try so hard to like fight it, but. You don't fight, you don't fight a wildfire actually. It's interesting. So you, 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 you try and mitigate it, get around it, contain it, and then allow it to burn itself out. As long as you can get into, that's why when you hear the news updates, like, oh, it's 63% contained or 80% contained. You don't put out a wildfire. Mother Nature needs to do her thing. Like fire is a natural occurring part of the environment. The reason why it's so extreme in California is because California just keeps getting more and more people and they keep building deeper and deeper into the wildlands. So you're actually increasing your risk, risk of exposure yeah. because if you're in the city, you're fine. Wildfires don't happen in the city. Wildfires happen in the wildlands. Well, we keep building deeper and deeper in the wildlands and you're increasing your risks. So, yeah, totally. totally. So there's a fun little uh, 
uh, behind the scenes about wildfire, ladies and gentlemen. We talk a lot about it. It always works its way into the show sooner or later. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good because it's related. And what you talked about with your your lifestyle that you were living at that time is very, very um, relevant. So to get back to Raw, basically, yeah. I had to think about how to what to name the company. And I actually heard Jack talking about Raw on his Facebook page. Like, Raw is my ma was his, like, caption on his uh, Instagram photos. I was like, Raw, that is so powerful. That uh. word because it's like the ancient Egyptian god Amun-Ra. And that's apparently when people say they pray, like in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. That's yeah. actually pray to Amun, the old uh, Egyptian god. It's like he was the main god in history. So, so it's funny. It's funny we're talking about this Egyptian and the Ra. So the cartoon from my childhood was called Thundercats. The character I'm thinking of was actually a, a bad guy, but his name was Mumra. M U M M dash R A. And in his weakened state, he was like a, a mummy form. But then, uh, you know, in, in, a, in proper sun exposure, he became supercharged and was like this like unstoppable being. It was wow. kind of cool. So, anyway. yeah, no, that's pretty good. That's, that's kind it's of from the, uh, it's from the 80s. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But based on Ra, most likely, obviously. Um, so basically, Ra is the, just an Egyptian symbol for the sun, essentially. And that's why I picked it, because it's all about natural light. And Ra optics basically is like the light of the sun god, is another way of saying it. Because optics is just the study, the science of the study of light and everything. So Ra optics literally just kind of translates to the light of the sun, the l natural light. And uh, that's what it's all about. So when we wear raw optics in the evening, we're basically blocking out the, f the frequencies that are most disruptive in the natural light or in the artificial light, I should say, to make it, it isn't natural light if it's artificial, but it makes it so it doesn't affect our biology as much. So when we block the blue light, which is what, you know, stimulates the melatonin or uh, pardon me, it's stimulates the suppression of melatonin, mm -hmm. then we only have red, orange, and yellow frequencies present pretty much, like the colors of fire, which is natural light more or less to have in the evening as like a bonfire or candles. Yeah. And that's kind of what these glasses do. So we can exist in the, in the modern world while mitigating some of the effects. It's interesting because like when I created Live the Fuel, obviously thanks to the firefighting experience, like my logo is fire. Uh, because I'm the tagline for the show is we want to fuel your health, business, and lifestyle. And when, when we're fighting fires, you're trying to remove fuel from the equation because that's what's fueling the fire, right? If you can mitigate the burnable materials, which are fuel, you can help s calm the fire down. But obviously, if you want to amplify the fire, just add fuel to the equation, right? So there's, yeah. and I chose white and blue in my in my logo because I wanted the intensity. Like I, I agree with you on the uh, the color spectrums of orange and red and yellow is, is that's valuable. But like if you study the uh, science class, like when you were in elementary school and you learned about the intensity of like the sun, so as our sun over the next thousands of years gets older and older and older, it'll eventually you know shrink and then expand and then eventually burn out. Uh, but you'll hit extreme extreme intensities, these higher temperatures where a fire can burn white hot or blue hot, and it's even hotter. Uh, than those those color spectrum. Yeah, so. and then as it burns out, it becomes a big red giant because it's burning at low intensity. Yeah, so you got it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So it's just cool. I just we're geeking out about fire color. <laughs> it's very relevant. So here, you know what I'm going to do? Just because my computer's battery is rapidly declining, so then yeah, hardcore material. Let's go charge you up here. Pause up real quick. Walk yeah, right. Let's stand by. It'll literally take two seconds. All right, stand by. I'll be about um. And the power of podcasting. We're back. Right, Matt is now so indoors. Versus yeah. outdoors, but he's still so committed to sunlight that he's opened his window to allow even more natural light in. So yeah, there we go. So pretty much um, what I've what I've done. Let's get to the chase. I want to get to the chase for the listener to be able to get the max of the message. I mean, obviously, you know, you've had Dr. Cruz on, but what I would ask is, are there any questions that you have that you know you'd like? to uh, know more about from his information you think the questions that your listeners asked a lot about well uh, my, my 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 way to help you on that is what do you feel you channel the best from jack cruz's knowledge because he hits on so many different areas and obviously what i find it, it with tutelage whether you have coaches or you have instructors or you know professors or whatever or just your leadership when you follow you end up niching in a certain area so yeah. what would you say your favorite section of his knowledge base is that you like to lead with and really pass on that you find the best positive feedback from? 
Yeah, it, it's pretty much the the benefits of sunlight. I mean, this is the, and it's the same thing that he focuses on, but it, it doesn't come across to people sometimes that clearly. So yeah, so let's, let's uh, good. That's why I'm hitting on this because when I try to explain to people how you kind of started the hit on it about, listen, there's stuff behind the eye that absorbs that natural healthy frequency and that directly impacts melatonin and melatonin directly impacts sleep and sleep cycles. So can, let's simplify that a little bit better for people. Correct. Yeah. So, um, what I could do is let's keep that on tab and what I can do for someone who's listening so that they get a bit better idea of where I'm coming at this from. Maybe I can tell how I got into this. Yeah. So yeah the backstory is going to be huge because obviously something triggered you to become this obsessed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's, that, what that teaches, I think more than anything. And the, the best way to put it is that, um, when I was about 14 years old, I was very, very sad. Um, in general, I just didn't have a good time in my life. I was uh, upset a lot and frustrated. I didn't feel good. I had some health issues as well um, of gut issues relating to gas, bloating constantly, uh, headaches, and I had really bad allergies as well, which was not fun going into high school trying to meet girls and you know do all this stuff and my stomach's all messed up and my I, my head hurts and blah blah blah. And you probably had complexion issues as a, as a side effect of all that as well because it's oh, all yeah. it's all tied together. Plenty of issues with um with health and yeah, like I was very pale. I was very skinny as well, but I didn't think of that as an issue. I just thought that was my natural genetic physique, which mm -hmm. isn't true. One of the biggest things I learned is that our body and our life, our health and the way we feel is a result of our environment and the way it affects our mitochondrial function, our engines and the way they can make energy, building proteins, um, coordinating functions, creating the proper secretions of our hormones in a timely fashion, the quality of the materials we're putting into our body. But again, primarily light allows us to do everything we need, even if the materials aren't exactly optimal. So I'm with you on that. And oh, I just, I just, the sun came out more. I got to open my window bigger. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there we go. So, so basically nice. I learned about, I, I, well, I started, you know, with this issues, I, I went to Western medical stuff. Didn't work. Uh, the standard pills I took for many years and so on didn't really do much. So then I went to naturopath stuff and did some naturopathic work and it helped a little bit more than the Western stuff, but still not much. Like things like essential oils and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. Like people think that that stuff is foundational more than, more than the Western medical drugs, but it really isn't much more because it isn't getting to the root of how our body functions and how we make energy, which is how we basically exist. So we, are we connecting on mitochondria now? Exactly. And, and so mitochondria are the engines I learned that basically allow us to take, extract available energy from the environment. Just like this is going back to the fire. It's cool we started there because what our mitochondria does is a little inner fire. And that's what Wim Hof calls his, his program. And they're doing the same thing. But basically, the mitochondria takes oxygen from the air, just like a fire, and hydrogen from our food just like a fire takes hydrogen from the, the plant matter it's burning. Yeah, the fuel. It them. Yeah, and it reacts the hydrogen and the oxygen, and fire makes water. The combustion reaction, the end result is water, which evaporates off, and uh, yeah, and energy too. Obviously, lots of heat release. So it, I'll have to bring this up to you. Keep going, but um, you'll love this visual when I find it. Uh, this was part of my fire training. Uh, have you ever heard of uh, an atmospheric inversion? Mm-mm. So something powerful from firefighting, and this is totally going to connect on this. That's why I want to add this in because I want to see how you, you've, you've kind of flow off of this. Um, an inversion. So you ever, in, you ever gone hiking deep into the mountains and, um, or you ever gone uh, hiking in general like early in the morning or especially early in the morning? You ever get like a, a fog? Well, you, you live in California. Yeah, totally. So you, know, you know how like people say, oh, well, the, the fog is burning off. Mm -hmm. So have you ever wondered how that happens? No, I, I have wondered how it happens. Yes, I don't know how it happens. So this totally stems off of what you're talking about, right? Like the energy building or the temperature increasing, so to speak. So um, I want to bring up a visual if I can get the image up. Anyway, the point is this. Picture a fire still burning from the night before. But when the sun sets, it calms down. It's still technically smoldering. And I've, we've literally fought nighttime fires because it was safer because the sun is a stimulator. It amplifies the intensity of the fire, right? So if we remove sun from the equation, now we're just left behind with the fuels and the existing fire that's there and it just calms down. 
Uh, we, we live on a fire that we got chased out of. And then we so, stood by for 10 hours until the night, the nighttime set in. And then we hiked back in and then established the, 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 the perimeter line of the line we were trying to reinforce earlier in the day without the sun, because it literally was a wall of fire as tall, as tall as the trees coming at us like a freight train. Like you could hear, it sounded like a freight train coming at us and everybody got the command to get the hell out. And there was a full blown road between the two forests on each side. And, they, and then the helicopter flew overhead and we're hearing the radio saying like, dude, guys, that thing slammed the road and just jumped right across. Like there's so much momentum. So you've got temperature, you've got sun, you've got wind. These are all things that uh, affect this. So the cool thing is like when you wake up in the morning and you're, uh, you know, you're, you're camped out on the side of a mountain and you're, you're, you're looking down on, on a, on the valley that was burning the day before. And there's a lot of smoke. Consider that your fog. And you could sit there and just watch. And then as the sun rises and starts warming the earth, you'll see the inversion layer start dissipating. And then you can actually pinpoint exactly where the hottest spot of that wildfire is in the valley. Because then all of a sudden, if that heat zone gets hot enough, the energy builds, 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 and the, uh, and the radiant heat coming off of that builds like a pocket. And then eventually it punches through the inversion layer and you'll see a stream of smoke go straight up into the atmosphere. And you can see that stuff shoot sometimes 50,000 feet, depending on how much intensity has been building underneath of it. Once that pops through the inversion layer, then all of a sudden the inversion dissipates. So can you, can you picture that? Yeah, kind of. Kind of cool, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the visual. We keep going. If, you, if that yeah, helps kind of tie cool. in. Well, it's just fascinating that, you know, I, I didn't understand this until reading several books and I'm, I'm working just so people know on, um, a book and a guide more than anything that's going to allow people to get these ideas in a simple fashion, but basically, oh, this is cool. So here, let's check this out. Yeah. Right. So here's your thermal summer belt right up here in the atmosphere. And then obviously here's your valley. And then I'll picture the valley on fire the day before. So there's going to be some heat pockets down there. And then the nighttime sets in, right? So the, there's, you have this uh, balance of hot and cold air. So the cool thing is the sun's gone. So everything calms down. So then there's this, this, there becomes this like this little, not a war, but like a little uh, picture, like a, a front, basically. Like, hey, there's some hot and cold air pockets and they're at the neutral. Well, that's your inversion layer. So once that thermal belt starts getting heated from underneath and the sun will, will help with that, that will eventually pop through. And when that pops through, now you have an unstable atmosphere because now that thermal belt's not keeping that, uh, the cold air down. Now the hot air is allowed to pull. And once that pops, now it's going to start pulling uh, other warm air down into that valley and amplifying that fire. It's pretty cool stuff. So this is all fire science I got to study when I was in, in the academy. <laughs> That's interesting. But, Very interesting. And, and that, that, that happens in our body, which right. is beyond fascinating. Like literally our mitochondria are little fire engines that take, like I said, oxygen from the air, hydrogen from the food we eat, whether it's a, a plant or an animal that ate the plant, and then reacts them, makes water, which is an exothermic reaction that releases energy, which is what is occurring in all life across the earth, even bacteria, which takes molecules that want to come together, reacting them, and then taking advantage of that energy to move forward and, and to have a, a, an ongoing chemical reaction. So it's it's fascinating that, that this is what's going on. So I, I learned about this through Jack after struggling trying to use diet as the next option to get better, right? And that wasn't happening. Oh, interesting. yeah. Interesting. Let's see. Yeah, see that? Wow. Again, ladies, this is all, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this is all on YouTube. Um, but that's a wildfire. There's your cooler air over here. And you can see where the sun is brighter on the right, right? So the right side of that, that whole area has gotten warmer. So it already punched through and you can see where it's pushing the smoke, right? Is the, 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 the airstream is all tied into this, right? So you can see where it's hot, cold. So it's, it's pretty cool to see how this affects how a fire can move, be amplified. And I want to see this tied back to the body, right? Because we have a choice here on how we're affecting the mitochondria that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I can always um, set these if you ever want this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I've got to look into that more and get it. <laughs> Try to get I, it. I want to see it. I mean, cause I'm, 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 I'm firing with you right now. And I'm like, dude, I never thought about this this way. I mean, it's happening right now on this show. And I'm like, if we can create a crossover of that visual with 
the, at the cellular level in the body right? And, uh, and apply this whole hot and cold spectrum and how this is a fueling that mitochondria. Very interesting. I yeah, I think about that. I'll think about that one and see how it puts, how it comes together. Take that back to Jack. See yeah, you. I will see how, because I'm sure it, it always seems to go back from the macro level to the micro level. But right. um, the, the, the whole story comes together when one, myself, was trying to use diet to fix issues in my health, which I learned- like are fundamental mitochondrial. Yeah, exactly. Like Kevin. So these issues are fundamentally mitochondrial. Like any diseases we have today, that's what I was learning. Any diseases that we're faced with today, for example, uh, Alzheimer's, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, obesity, and autoimmune diseases, this has been proven that these are mitochondrial energetic dysfunctions, which means that the body can't make energy efficiently enough. So then we get these dysfunctions occurring, right? Right. So when I had this going on, I was thinking to myself, how do I fix the mitochondria? I mean, that's what I started learning. I started applying Jack's protocols thinking, and he was saying food isn't the key driver. It's all about the mitochondria and the engines. So here's an analogy for your listeners basically to consider, which is the gist of the whole show. And then let's see what you got here. Here we go. Well, everything you're talking about is how I got everything you op you're opening up for our listeners right now. They can go back and listen to episode 44 for another Jack follower, Kevin Cottrell. And his episode was titled Silicon Valley, his, his corporate history, right? His cancer battle, paleo and sleep. And because he was doing the same thing. He thought, oh, I'll focus on this paleolithic thing because he was big into the paleo FX back then and everything mm -hmm. else. And then obviously he came across Jack and mm -hmm. took it to a whole different level and became a fellow, as Jack taught me, I don't know if he's still using this, a fellow mitochondriac. Yes, he is. He has shirts now, and I have one of the shirts in my drawer right here. Uh, I'm jealous. Because he, he, he told me, because I was bio, we were talking about, Jack and I were talking about biohacking and everything else. Yeah. And he well, went red hot. Yeah. He went red hot on that one. I like yeah. it. So he does purple and red because those are the frequencies of light that control the mitochondria the, the most, let's say. And so basically, I learned this, uh, this idea, oh, well, let's, let's put it into an analogy. Let's say you have a car and you open the hood and well, let's, let's step back. Even a car is a functional thing. It takes gas and puts it through an engine to it's make a combustion process. Energy. Exactly. It, yeah. it uses a fuel to release energy to move and do work. Right. Mm -hmm. Same in our body. We take fuel from our food and from light but you know, and we break it down and use it to move, but primarily from our food is, is sort of not our main source of fuel, but it is the one I'm referring no, to. I, I would say I like your car analogy because I was a car buff when I was a kid. I did my first motor swap at 16, but yeah, I mean, think about it. it if you ever had to tune up your car, you, you put quality gas in and then from time to time you got to put a fuel cleaner in there, but in the combustion process, there's spark plugs and spark wires and your battery and everything else, right? So exactly. it, take, it, takes, it takes electricity, part of the energy, to ignite the fossil fuel, ergo the gasoline, just go back to wildfire, right? It takes a lightning strike, which is 75 to 80% of wildfires are actually started by mother nature. It's a lightning strike to a dry wow. bed of fossil fuels with the right relative humidity, the right, the right dryness, and boom, you got a wildfire starting off, just like in a car. Hey, I'm going to turn that key. The battery is going to send current into the spark plug wires to those spark plugs that are mounting in the engine where the fuel is sitting. Yeah. And boom, you have combustion. So with the cool thing with life, though, is that that little spark theoretically occurred under the oceans a long time ago with uh, basically the a proton gradient and just natural, um, let's say, structuring of molecules in a certain way that carried this reaction onward. But so that if, if, if your spark goes out, you can't come back to life. But right. the way it does relate, and this is what, where I'm actually interested in getting the engine analogy more tuned in because you sound like you know about engines. What I basically tell people is imagine now you took your car and you open up the hood and you pour tar all over the engine. So like it gets into the pistons. I don't know if that's even possible. but it, uh, You'd have to open the engine up. I mean, actually, you, if you pour tar on your engine, you do have in a traditional automobile, you do have – you know, belts that are moving uh, the crank arms, which, which move yeah. the pistons within the engine. So the pistons are protected inside the motor. Mm -hmm. But if you pour tar onto the belt drive system, I can have the best battery on the market. I can have the best spark plugs installed in the motor. I can have the best gasoline. But you go to turn Absolutely. that over, and now it's like it's being bound. Exactly. So let's say we have tar 
we pour tar on the engine and let's say you open the motor, you open the engine up and what we'll, could you unscrew? Yeah, pour the, right into the oil. Well, could you, put, unscrew you put tar in your oil? Your oil is supposed to lubricate and exactly. allow. That's and, perfect. You put yeah. tar in your oil. Yeah. And now how about this though? I want to make the analogy even better. This is really good because you've really helped me refine this analogy and it's good that I didn't write this into some book or something <laughs> before talking with you. Can you open the motor up or the engine and uh, unscrew the pistons? Like basically, take them apart more or less or loosen them so they aren't firing in perfect sync. Uh, sync. Well, actually, it, you could actually damage your pistons from inappropriate maintenance of the engine. So, yeah. for example, one of the easiest ways to get a car to last is a, a basic tune-ups. Like I, I regularly, it's, we can tie this back to human beings, right? We don't take oh. care of ourselves regularly, right? But I, t I drive my car a lot. I did 37,000 miles last year on my Subaru because I'm a road warrior for business. So but I, I'm religious, man. I have every 5,000 miles, I take that car in. I put the best synthetic oil on the market into that motor. I have them do a tire rotation and that's my regular thing. Like they just, I mean, I'm in there all the time. Now, granted this year, I crossed 200,000 miles. This car's a 2012, mind you, it's not that old. So I'm, I'm, that's how much I drive. So I had them take the whole motor out, redo all the cam seals, all the stuff we're talking about now and clean it all out, put it all back together. And now it's like a new motor again. So I yeah. can get another 100,000 miles out of that bad boy. That's amazing. Right? But now that's because I've taken it to that level. I want to see if I can get this car to hit 500,000. Just so I, I want to see if Subaru like gives me an award and gives me a new car or something out of it. Because I just love, cool. I, I hate this, the disposable economy. We just yeah. beat the crap out of something and they think it doesn't last anymore. I'm like, no, it's how you take care yeah. of the body, so to speak, the car. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about with the, with the body. So, so let's say you put the tar in and then you are in your oil. So it's not going to, everything's going to be clogged. And then let's say you were somehow to open oh, you'll up. Seize, the, you'll seize the motor. Yeah. And you were actually, let's say you were to unscrew all the pistons. Now this is a really vague analogy, a loose analogy, let's say, but not vague, but loose. Um, and then let's say you, you go to turn on your car and you're pouring in premium gas, like you said, and the car won't start or the car starts, but it's blowing black smoke and your engine won't run. Yeah. Right. Well, or you can actually throw a cylinder. So if we're getting really technical, so like, okay, your car is so bad out of timing, right? Those spark plugs I told you about, well, you have to change them every once in a while. Well, what if you don't, if people, people just don't tune up the car, they don't take care of the car. Mm -hmm. So great. Maybe I'm changing the oil and I'm putting a gas in, but then I, I don't do a regular tune up. Yeah. Well, now you got a spark plug failing. So now that valve is failing and that piston is now out of timing. So you have a, four, let's say a basic four That's cylinder. That's what I'm looking for. That's the part I needed but to Now your, your pistons are not firing at the same timing. Dude, this is huge. What we're and doing right now Now your car huge. could be back. You can could, you could still sort of drive the car, but it's kind of limping along. No, this is along. perfect. This is a perfect analogy. So basically, just so I get this right. So you said if you don't get your car tuned up, the spark, what happens to the spark plugs exactly? Well, picture like a, you know, picture your spark plugs and the spark's not, like you have one of the start one of the spark plugs went bad. Well, yeah. I have a spark plug for every cylinder. Yeah. Four cylinder car. I only need four spark plugs. But if one started failing, you know, because of bad fuel or whatever, yeah, like the time's you, off, you right? Can get, you can get crap building up on the spark plug. Exactly. And so, now that one's not that's not firing at the same intensity as the other three. So now my pistons and my valves are all out of out of whack and they're not timing properly. And the car could be bucking, it could be backfiring and now it sounds like you're driving a ghetto mobile because yeah. it's so really we, not. And you keep doing that. You're going to screw that motor up. Exactly. So if we were to take, um, not tar and put it in our oil, but what we're doing with our mitochondria is we're putting in really bad old cloggy oil. Like, so really actually here we're, we're going we're to convert this. I'm going to help you with this. Please. Shitty fuel. Shitty fuel. Let's go but, back to that. Because like food and water and, and, and this is all fuel for the body, right? People buy really, really, really crappy fuel. And if they're not tuning up the car and they're not putting in quality, the, the oil's job is just to keep things lubricated. Got it, yeah. Keep the temperature down in the motor and keep it mitigated. You still need fuel for the combustion. Totally. Right? So if you have crappy spark plugs and crappy gasoline, your car's not going to fire and be like really fuel efficient. The oil's job is just to keep all the parts from not getting superheated and, and yeah. wearing out too soon. If that, does yeah. that help? Yeah, that helps. So basically what I'm getting at, and I'll just move this forward so you get what, what I'm trying to say, and maybe you can put in the best analogy, is what people are trying to do today is essentially put premium gas into an engine that has 
broken spark clubs, yeah, uh, spark plugs, broken, yeah. broken spark plugs and really, really bad oil. And it's been clogged up with bad fuel over time. Yep. People are trying to put in premium gas to fix the broken spark plugs. Yeah. Premium gas won't fix the broken spark club. I'll, I'll, plugs. I'll, tie, I'll tie it together for you. Yeah. Please. They're watching that cool commercial at the gas pump because now these new gas stations have like TVs at them and stuff too, right? So you're yeah. going to sit there and you're filling up your car and like, hey, don't forget to put this new zero emission, blah, 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 like high octane stuff in from time to time. Or you walk into an auto parts store because there's something wrong with your car. Like, oh, you should put this you know, amazing fuel cleaner in your gas next time you put it in. And this will clean your motor out and clean it all up. Well, that's a, that's a supplement. That's a Band-Aid. Exactly. If not if you're still, if you're going to go then go back to putting crappy fuel in and you're still not changing the oil often enough and you never did tune the car up and, and well, the, thing the, spark is that the spark plugs are broken. That's right. what I'm getting at is like people today by trying to use diet. So we're putting food into our body and into our mitochondria that need to process it. So trying to put good food into our body to fix mitochondrial issues yeah. is like trying to put better gas into an engine to make the failing spark plugs, plugs and bad tune up, yeah. themselves, which there isn't going to happen. That's the key link. So it's like the mitochondria, although the food that goes in kind of affects them a little bit, the key driver that affects the engine in our body is light. So here's the best analogy is that to fix the, the you know, you do every 5,000 miles, you get a spark plug tune up. Well, what we need to do, every single waking period of consciousness. So every single day, instead of every 5,000 miles, we need to get up and watch the sunrise and be exposed to morning light because that's how we tune our spark plugs up or fix them, tune up our whole engine every day. There you go. That's the best analogy to do. And if we don't do that every single day with the healthy sun exposure in the morning, then we aren't tuning up our body. And the thing is our body's much more intricate than a car's engine. You know, we have- Oh God, yeah. Over this, this is- Hundreds of trillions. This is genetic evolution, you know, at the cellular yeah. level. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're carbon-based life forms, going back to your analogy of that spark under an ocean and, and how our cells have matured to the point. But it's like, I, I, I love geeking out about telomeres and how like, hey, your telomeres and your DNA. Telomeres long, you're living long. Telomeres are short, you're screwed. Like, <laughs> you want to you be doing things to your body, like sunlight, to help keep your cells healthy so yeah. you can live longer. I'll tell you, you should ask Jack about that next time you have him on because he actually is, is, has found some evidence that contradicts the telomere issue. Really? And it, it, not, the telom not that it's irrelevant, but um, he's just saying that the telomere length isn't really the key mechanism or the key driver. It might be- Oh, it's not a key mechanism. It's just part of the, if you're doing a test and you want, I mean, I do, I do, I do like the telomere test mm -hmm. to measure aging. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get one of these done because I'm such a health nut. I want to see- if everything that I've been doing, I want to see if like, hey, I'm 41 now. I want to see if I've got like a 35 year old or a 30 year old telomere test mm -hmm. because you could yeah. do ask him about that because he he thinks that it doesn't um, interesting it doesn't matter now. And but it's not it's not that the stuff you're doing isn't helping because it probably is, but that the telomeres aren't the most uh, accurate or reliable because there can be people who are really fucked up who have still long telomeres, yeah, people who are pretty healthy who have really shitty telomeres. Um, it's cause there's something related to the mitochondria and, and again, the methylation of the genome that goes into it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a piece. So anyway, though, people basically who are anyone who's listening to this, um, can, can know that to close my story, basically what happened is I learned about this sunlight deal. And as soon as I started going in the sun, not focusing on the diet as much, my mitochondria were getting better. I was using sunlight, cold exposure, primarily just those two things and blue blockers at night to improve my sleep, yep. which is that time we do the tuna basically um, more or less. Well, yeah, your, your maximum rest yeah, recovery is in your deep REM sleep cycle. And if yeah. you're, if you have things, if you have stimulants in your environment that are preventing a proper sleep cycle, you're, you're screwing up your cellular rest and recovery, the healing process. Precisely. Yeah. And that was my problem my whole life as a teenager growing up in the world of, the gadgets and all these things. And I didn't know that. I didn't realize just how big of a deal that is. But now seeing my little brother and his friends and how much time they spend on their devices and all my adult friends, because I'm friends with more adults than I am with people in my generation now, just because I'm interacting with these people. I think it's making me smarter. But, but basically, they all complain to me, many of them, about how their kids are addicted to their devices if they didn't catch them early enough where they could raise them away from the devices. So, and, and they're telling me, like, what do I do? 
how do I help? How do I stop this? And it's like kind of, it's such a bad addiction where it's like at a certain point, the only thing you can really do is maybe take their freaking device away entirely, which I know one woman who actually did that, but now it was just so miserable with their daughter that she's like bargaining to get, get give it back somehow. It's, it's a mess. And this is the, the biggest issue we're facing for our health because we're destroying that regeneration that we do every night that actually keeps us young. And oh, I, I, I disappeared. In, in, I've definitely learned that over the months. years too. It's, it's like, I, I purposely moved away from my cubicle life before firefighting for a reason. Like I was in the, I was, I was managing telecom environments and coaching teams and call centers. And so I was in, I was in these, you know, the artificial light, the one building we had had no outdoor windows. I was like, it was awful. Like I purposely found myself wanting to go outside. Most people went outside for a smoke break. I'm like, no, I just want to go outside. Was that a, one of those old routing centers that was built entirely of bricks? No, it just it was in an industrial park here here in Pennsylvania, wow. and they just happened to the building that they decided to move and expand to um, was just it just didn't it just, the design of the building didn't have a ton of glass, and I told them like I just didn't like the design, but I mean they this was this was my T-Mobile days. I was a coach for T-Mobile, and. Uh, I, I was, I was like, I don't miss it. And I remember I, I, my energy levels were different. Uh, I, I, cause I was a cyclist back then too. So I loved road cycling and mountain biking cause I was in the outdoors and I was getting into running and I was doing marathons. And I was like, I found myself wanting to be outdoors more and I hated the office life. And that was one of the, I mean, obviously I took it to the extreme went and did the wild and firefighting. So I went from mm -hmm. like, you know, office life to that, but well, you it, probably needed it. It changed my life forever. That's amazing that you made the change follow just just following your intuition on that one. Uh, and it's a good change. And you know, it's interesting to touch on the building stuff is that there were researchers for a long time, in fact, going all the way back to Roman and Greek times, they knew and even ancient Egypt. That's a story that I'll save for a later date, but but the short version is that there was an Egyptian pharaoh named Akhenaten mm -hmm. who basically uh changed he banished the worship of polytheism of many gods in favor of the one god the aten the sun disc and so they built their temples open to the sky to worship the sun disc and they knew about the, the all the healing benefits and the power of the sun but when akhenaten passed away um his this was kind of hidden and apparently some someone i met who was an american guy who worked for the egyptian government to make tourism films he learned about this and learned the true stories and, and that the actual reason Akhenaten's tombs were hidden behind the tombs of other pharaohs was because people, they didn't want people to know about the benefits of sun because it brought us to a higher level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so that began, the hiding of the benefits of the sun began as long ago as ancient Egypt, which yeah. I find fascinating. And I find it fascinating too, because if you look at, uh, I, I, you gotta have a respect, you gotta love history. And you always look back, like you, you, you casually kind of threw in there like Greeks, right? So people look at, they think of history and they, they, they think of like the, the photographs or if you ever go to Greece or the Roman era. But if you go far enough back in the Greek era, look at most of their common area structures. They're all open pillars. They don't oh, really yeah. have a lot of closed off walls. It was very open concept, right? So just like you're saying, it was all open. But if you look at the Egyptian history that most of us know, people are always impressed by the pyramids. But if you understand, like the pyramid was built as a tomb. It was not like a castle, like our medieval times, right? It's no, that was where they, they would build the pyramid. That's his future tomb. That's what you're building. So, and then the, the pyramid is sealed off and nobody can ever get in. So it's not like they lived and, and ran their kingdoms, so to speak, out of a pyramid. The no, pyramid, they were open. The pyramid was a burial place. And it makes sense. And it's just funny that we began to think, I mean, this whole, like I'm looking at my, the houses around me, the neighbor's houses, like all of this is based on, if I'm not mistaken, like a British style of housing, at least the houses I'm looking at, like Victorian era. Yeah. And it's this, Ba the knowledge of the time was that the sun wasn't necessary or it just wasn't really considered as a key component for health. Yeah. Um, but the Romans knew about it. So they had solariums where they could sun themselves it built into their houses, open to the sky. Likewise, um, this was common for a long time architecture to let in more natural lighting, but eventually with the advent of artificial lighting, people believe that it had the same impact as far as our bodies because 
they didn't know about the health impacts. They just thought lighting was lighting. So the goal was to build buildings like what you just said with minimal shadows on the inside. So they would just have is you know fewer windows and just artificial light flat across the ceiling all the way. Which in the call center environments is common because you're not distracted. They want you 100% focused on your job, right? So you can't be like looking up and all of a sudden like looking out the window and seeing people leave for lunch and stuff like that. So it's like, oh, it was, a, it was like, it was like, I look at it as a form of containment. It's a form of containment, 100%, yeah. Yeah. literally and, and figure, figuratively. Um, so that was interesting to read about as part of these studies of the benefits of natural lighting that really our whole modern lifestyle is based on this basically lack of the knowledge of sunlight, which came, you know, throughout the dark ages after the Roman period fell. And then after the 1800s, 1900s, it kind of resurged and people knew about the benefits of the sun. Yep. But then again, after the advent of things like penicillin during World War II, and then earlier than that, just the advent of artificial lighting, the sun and its importance kind of went out of fashion again until just recently with like someone like Dr. Kruis and Dr. Alexander Wunsch in Germany teaching people. Anyhow, though, um, I, like I said, followed Kruis's protocols as a 16 year old when I went on a foreign exchange program to Eastern Europe because I was so miserable at home where I was. I just wanted to go anywhere. Seriously, I was growing up here in school all day. I felt so bad and I didn't know why, but I and, just, and what you're saying is very common these days. Very, it's very it's common. Worse. I mean, it's worse. Suicide has passed driver's accidents as the number one cause of death in my age cohort, which is that's scary. That. That's astounding. I mean, see, you know, when, when I went to school, it was car accidents. Yeah, it was. It, it wasn't changed. suicide. It just changed. It, like my mom sent me the article just a few weeks ago. It was, and Jack actually used the same article and talk he was giving just in uh, in Los Angeles where we just were. So. <laughs> Basically, this is a fascinating and, and astounding thing that's going on in our world today, and people don't see how these pieces fit together. But uh, I'm a big proponent of everything Jack teaches and you're reinforcing because I grew, up, I, I grew up on a farm. I was outside all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's really simple. Like, there's a guy named Dr. Wallace who Jack probably mentioned on his episode with you who works actually in our home area. Uh, at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia down at CHOP. Yeah. So CHOP's, for anyone who doesn't know about it, it's like one of the best. Oh, it's uh, one of the top children's hospitals in the country. In the world, even, yeah. yeah. And it's also a really high-level research facility mm -hmm. and with University of Penn as well as a partner, uh, University of Pennsylvania, this Ivy League school. Oh, yeah, you, you know, my yeah. fiancé went to UPenn, so yeah. <laughs> there we go. So it's basically, <laughs> congratulations on the fiancé, by the way. I, I, I like it. <laughs> very cool. So... Um, this guy, Dr. Wallace, who's worked in various places across the country, uh, I believe Vanderbilt was one spot somewhere else before that, but basically he has been studying mitochondria and mitochondrial genetics for a long time. And maybe you could even pull up a picture of Dr. Doug Wallace. I'm working on it right now. It's, yeah, it's Doug Wallace, really, right? Really cool. Yeah, Doug Wallace. And basically um, he has found that all diseases today that, like I mentioned earlier, this isn't just me talking about it. This is Dr. Doug Wallace who's, who's shown this. All these diseases that people are facing today are mitochondrial in origin, the, the main chronic diseases. And the research shows that the main thing that makes our mitochondria work well is natural electromagnetic fields like sunlight and so on. So here, this guy at the top. Um, yeah, here, perfect. Yeah. yeah. There's he's a YouTube professor. guy. Oh, he's a professor too. Okay. Yeah, he is, he is a professor. So yeah. you know, if you go real quick, if you go back and uh, if you go to his the Wikipedia page on the um, the yeah. search, and then you just click on the Wikipedia of him. There's a really good picture of him there. Um, yeah, right. Oh, he's down got there. a lot of content on the mito action as well. So uh -huh. yeah, he's, he's, we he's and then on the Wikipedia page, there's a really nice picture that shows just how I think he's such a good guy. And he it was a painting. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So now if you see this. In the painting, if you zoom in, this is a, a picture that was made for uh, his colleagues, but it's him holding a mitochondria on- oh, a, Is that a Ben Franklin spin? Exactly. That's Just like awesome. Ben, Brank, ben Franklin style, but it's Doug Wallace with the mitochondria. And the thing that, the reason why this is such an important painting that they made for him, this little picture, is because what he's showing in biology is- way more important than what Ben Franklin found about electricity. Like he has literally proven that 
our bodies are run by these engines that are mitochondria. And when we get diseases like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, it is because the mitochondria aren't working well. And I met him right. twice because I, you know, he's close and it's cool that one of my mom's good friends, one of her best friends actually in this area, he is a, um, he is a professor at UPenn and CHOP as well. Oh, wow. Uh, so, or a researcher, I should say, a neurologist. And so basically, he knows Dr. Wallace because they've actually collaborated before. So when I was telling this guy about Dr. Wallace, he's like, oh, I know Doug. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Because I was learning about it from Dr. Cruz. And then here's my mom's friend in the backyard. I was like, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> and like, good friend. And so the point is that I talk with him and he's telling me about how like 90 eight percent of the federal budget of our taxpayer money because now i'm a taxpayer too yeah. as i started my business and i turned 18 a year ago um it's being wasted on searching in the nuclear genome for the issues but the real issues is in the mitochondria now what he hasn't jumped over into is how you can how we can really fix it you know he's seeing the problem but not necessarily the solution beyond the drugs which is what is the standard in their industry and their oh and, man i gotta get connected to this guy yeah. My fiance, he, he, he studied, he had his bachelor's of science in genetics and development biology at Cornell. My mm -hmm. fiance went to Cornell. She went to, Cor she went to Cornell you and then get him on your podcast. That would be the first podcast ever done with Dr. Wallace. That would be legendary. Well, I think it's funny because my fiance did her undergrad at, at, at Cornell because she's a doctor of equine veterinary medicine and a doctor of chiropractic for animals. But so she's really geeked out about the wellness side. But yeah, she did her undergrad at, at Cornell where, where he went and he works for UPenn and she did her doctorate at UPenn. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So That's he, hilarious. He's, he's an amazing, amazing researcher. But the implications of what I've just said that he's found cannot be under, cannot be overstated. Like, the diseases we're facing today are mitochondrial. Now, how do we fix it? This is what I learned from Dr. Cruz, who's put the pieces together more than anyone, more than even Dr. Wallace, um, as far as the overarching view. Yeah. And it's pretty simple. Getting good quality sleep is number one, but believe it or not, good quality sleep starts with waking up early in the morning and getting the first rays of sunlight exposure to set the circadian rhythm and start the hormonal processes going on in our brain throughout the day again, from that initial sunrise, like the moment it comes over the horizon, that's the most impactful few minutes. So um, I've been staying out late with my friends because I just came home for the holidays and I have been missing the sunrises, which is really not good. Like since I've changed that, the, the difference in how I feel when I get the sunrise versus when I don't is like night and day. And I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm doing it because I can really see what my life used to be like a little bit, but it's yeah. not optimal. But Oh no, I... I, I had old friends from 1999 hanging out last night. I just aged myself. And, uh, yeah, that's the year that, I was born. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I, I was supposed to finish my engineering degree at Penn State in 99. So uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's funny because I don't like to stay up late. And, dude, I haven't done this in a while, but I was up until 4 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And I don't do that. So my, my, this morning – I was, I was groggy. I was, I, I'm usually dialed in, man. Like I'm with you. I get up, I do grounding. I do earthing. Like I'm a, yeah. I, I don't care if it's winter time. I'll go out there and stand in the snow and do get, get a little, uh, little cold therapy while I'm at it. You know? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> My fiance thinks I'm weird. Um, but Hey, it's okay. Weird people change the world. So yeah. Speaking yeah. of that. I'm gonna give it a little so, so basically what all these things came together and after well, let's see what you got here coming on. Oh yeah, there's Jack. Just give Jack a little love, a little visual. So. Yeah, exactly. Please. Yeah, Please. jackcruise.com, ladies and gentlemen, with a K, K-R-U-S-E. Uh, the guy's got the biggest damn blog history that I think I've ever come across. I mean, he's published so much content. By the way, I love the new site. I haven't, I forgot he launched it. He redid the site too. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But, yeah, so, you know, they're, they're doing good. He's doing good stuff. And I'm, I'm excited to, to keep pushing this forward. Um, so to, to get to the meat of it, basically, and tell people what can you do with this information. If you yeah, let's give them some takeaways as we're, avoid, as we're coming to the end of the show. Yeah, exactly. If you want to avoid mitochondrial disease, you want to avoid all these issues we've talked about and keep these engines running well. It's a simple six-step process that I basically take in from all of Jack's, everything that's all over the place. And I'm calling it the light diet. So this is what I'm, I'm working on different forms of content. Let me use my, me use my red yeah. marker here. Please do. What do we got? So the light diet. So step one, you want to watch the sunrise every day. Hold on. Pretty simple. Let me brand this. Light diet? Yeah, the light diet. All right. 
Now, uh, watch the sunrise. Yeah, watch the sunrise. And you can do plus live outdoors or an and sign. Live outdoors. Get outside. Exactly. Yeah. Get outside. You know, and that's, a, that's a fine way to put it. See, really, though, I would say live outdoors because that's the light diet. I mean, getting outside is one way to do it. But actually, if you, if you live outdoors, that's when you're going to experience the maximal benefits. And here's what I'm going to say, Scott, is that I learned from Jack just over Thanksgiving. He revealed something to me that he hasn't really talked about much, is that just by being behind a window, you're still getting natural light, which is better than artificial light. But it that's still filter. filtering. It's still filtering out UV. And because it filters out red and infrared, you still have more blue light. So you have a relative blue light. Oh, especially in, in modern construction, because they've designed the glass windows to, to filter that out. Exactly. Uh, and, it's, and they filter more infrared, so there's no heat coming up through the sun. So you really want to live outdoors as much as possible like you did in your firefighting days. This is really how we achieve health. So whatever, whichever form you do it, like you build a nice sunroom where you, the windows all open up. Or, hey, you'll appreciate this. Totally. My house is my fiance's great grandmother's house. It was built in 1912. Nice. I have the original windows here. So I don't, I don't have a lot getting filtered out. <laughs> These are the antique like rope pulley supported windows with like beautiful original wooden lattice and they're not very energy efficient because it's just straight up clear glass. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And yeah. quartz would be even better. Those are maybe very expensive or, or there's plastics now that could let the light through, but they're not sold for that purpose. So that's something I'm going to be working on in the next couple of years. Interesting. But essentially, um, so that's basically it's simple, but get up with for, for the sunrise and it'll change your life more than anything else. If there's only one takeaway that people get, you, I mean, Scott, you know this as an entrepreneur too. When you get up and you're up at 6.45 in the morning or even 5 in the summertime, nothing beats that as far yeah. as productivity and creativity. I mean, Yeah, I tell people all the time, if they say, oh, I'm not a morning person, I'm like, uh, guess what? Just like your genetics, you can reprogram them. Become so, a morning person. Yeah, become it. It's, if it's you're a night person, that means you're just a messed up diurnal animal. Because well, it's, it's terrible for people who have third shift uh, jobs and careers. Like it's, I feel bad for them because like, that's why I feel so, people that are in our healthcare system are supposed to save lives who are nurses and doctors. They're just, you know, it's 24 hour care. They have to do those shifts, but I feel so bad for them because these people sleep during the peak time. And yeah, that's not good. When they drive into their work, they're driving in at the end of the day and the sun may have already set depending on the time of year. Oh, yeah. So they, they're not getting hardly any daylight. Yeah, so. it's really bad. That's really, really bad for health. So unless that's your only absolute way to make money, just don't do that. That's really, really bad. And Jack even recommends people just quit because you really can't build optimal health in that situation. But anyhow, step one is easy enough. Um, and you do that. And the key thing is after you've gotten your morning sun exposure with as minimal clothing as possible, if you live by the beach, it's easy. Go watch the sunrise, stand in the sun, get the red light all over your skin. It's easiest if you live by the beach or like in the mountains or something like that. But, oh, when, um, I, when I lived in Colorado, man, it was like we, we went, we would leave pre sunrise, get to the rock climbing walls that we always hit. And we would do morning uh, climbing routes before we go do our jobs. So we'd have we, each of us, my two, my two roommates were, were just back in 12, 13, uh, but I had mountaineering roommates. So we, we'd wake up, grab our gear, go get, you know, these are bolted routes so you can get up them faster. We'd, we'd throw our rope and get at least two routes in per person, pack up, go back in, get back to the house, split up, go do our jobs. It was, wow. was, that was a morning lifestyle. It's That's awesome. amazing. And you probably felt pretty good doing that, eh? Damn right, dude. You see the sun coming up and you're hanging off of a rock wall in the canyon uh, in Golden, Colorado. It's like... Life is good. Dude, life. exactly. And that's what people need to get is like, if your life isn't good, it means you're not getting the morning sunlight, I swear. I mean, it, it's that easy. Like when you start embracing, like I did today, went for a walk with my mom out at this nice loop at a college nearby and I sat in the yard in the sun all day. It was like amazing. Even though I woke up a little later than usual, I just got right in the sun and looked it's right even at more, it. more important this time of year too. Oh, yeah. We're not in the yeah, summer session. You know, the notice will be the, the difference you'll notice will be more tr impactful on a cloudy versus sunny day. But um, so that's really important to start off. And, and the key, like we said, after the sunrise, you want to get out and you want to get into the sun to build vitamin D. But in the winter, we're not going to be able to here. But as it gets stronger, the stronger it gets through the day, you might even feel the effect more. But yeah. two separate effects primarily one is the, the circadian mechanism starting with the sunrise getting everything turned on, essentially hormones, all these other processes. 
And then later in the day, when we have more UV, that's actually more of a charging effect, like physically charging our body. So we need both of these. And that's what step one encompasses. Step two helps that process by making uh, our systems better. So basically you want to drink spring water and eat seafood. It's, it's really simple as that. All right. Or you could even just say drink good water, but spring water is really good. So I'll, 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 I'll keep it to the textbook. We'll just let's go. People can, people can modernize this later. I'm going to take a photo. This is going to go up on Instagram today. I'll, I'll take a photo. I'll, Sweet. I'll tag you. Do the thing. Dope. We got spring yeah, water. Just, throw, just when you put the picture up, just write my name. So if it goes viral, yeah. put <laughs> Light Diet by Matt Maruka on there. there you go. So you got um, spring water and then what else we got? Oh, seafood. Spring, exactly. Drink spring water and eat seafood. Now, there's another detail to the diet that we won't go into too much. But essentially humans, this is maybe some people who are vegans, vegetarians don't, don't like to hear this, but humans are obligatorily carnivores. And the reason I say this is because when we live, like humans live all over the world, we can live in places where there is not, there cannot be plants in the winter seasons primarily. Yeah. And so we're designed to be eating meat and fish in those winter seasons. In the Even summer, if you don't want to embrace carnivore, at least read the book Omnivore's Dilemma. It's... You know, it's, I agree with you. I've, I've said this on the show multiple times. I'm a hardcore carnivore. It's, I'm sorry, you can't unprogram millions of years of development into where we are today. So it's. Well, it, and, and doesn't even, like, here's the cool thing is th these arguments, like the one you just made is great. And I believe, I uh, agree with it. Like I'm looking at this, at this squirrel right now outside on, on the branch and it's super fat because it's been loading up on on nuts and stuff for the winter and now it's burning its fat off to stay warm i mean that thing is fat as shit and it's unbelievable yeah. and I, I don't know why it's so high up in the tree but, but anyway, <laughs> cause i'm like on the third story but anyway basically um what you need to tell people who are vegans and vegetarians now is there's this research on something called deuterium which is something jack wasn't talking about probably when you interviewed him in, in february but deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen known as heavy hydrogen and basically as we like when you eat plants plants have higher amounts of deuterium than animal food because deuterium is deleterious. It's like the bad oil in the mitochondria. So when we eat plant foods, they have more deuterium, but as they go up the food chain, the animals lower the levels of this deuterium. Yeah. So we want to eat the highest animals on the food chain just below us because they have the lowest amount of deuterium. In That's why I, I highly support uh, bison, buffalo, elk. Uh, anytime you can go wild game, the best. I mean, that's why I missed about living yes. out west. Arizona and Colorado, I had all that accessible. I, I just had a quarter of a cow uh, delivered. So trust me, like uh, remnants, their, their digestion process. The fats, does everything organs. you're talking about. Oh yeah, I'm hardcore keto or whatever keyword you want to throw in there. But yeah, trust me, man. I got, I got a freezer full of beef right now. Exactly. And if you eat, this is the coolest thing that I learned with this stuff called deuterium, which again, ask Jack about deuterium when he's on your next show. You'll, you'll love it. But basically the reason why eating grain-fed meat is so much worse than grass-fed meat believe it or not, is because grains have way more deuterium, this heavy hydrogen, yeah. because of the way they're made with GMOs and everything. And so when animals eat this GMO corn and grain, the animal meat and fat and protein has more deuterium in it than regular light hydrogen. And right. so this clogs up our engine like bad gas. This is the real reason why vegetable oil and sugar is bad. So even though this isn't actually a step in the diet, we could add drink spring water, eat seafood, and eat seasonally because – you could even do a plus eat seasonally because when we eat seasonally, that means in the winter we're eating a very low deuterium diet with almost no plant matter included. In the summer, we have more sun so we can excrete more of it. So there we go, right? So that's simple enough. Spring water, easy. Drink good quality delivered spring water. Avoid water from places like California because these have higher levels of deuterium. We want water closer to the poles, higher elevation and more inland. So like pristine mountain springs, glacial water, it has less of this deuterium stuff, which is again, clogs up our engines. All right. I got number three here. So, yeah. So to, well, just seafood also, um, people need to eat seafood because it goes into our eyes and skin and allows us to absorb more sunlight. Oh, I just had a big yeah. slab of swordfish the other night. <laughs> there you go. And if you're pale, then you, like I was pale as hell and I used to be able to not tan. Once I started loading up on seafood and good quality spring water and morning sun exposure, I was magically, but not magically, able to start absorbing more sunlight and tanning and getting a really nice color of my skin. So we can change our biology. Anyway, so number three would be avoid man-made EMF. So basically, yeah, avoid man-made EMF. 
or yeah, that's a good, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Those are all the frequencies and all right. the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all this stuff disrupts the mitochondrial function. And this uh, might seem like I, I remember when Jack, Jack's episode, he talked about how he literally, he knows people, he, he actually has taught people like, okay, phase one Wi-Fi. Like, I, like me, I shut them down every night. Shut down every night. There you and go. Start Wi-Fi. shutting Not off your using, Wi-Fi. Um, the one beauty of my old house is we have metal siding. So actually, our cell phones suck in this house because the metal siding actually doesn't allow proper penetration of cell phone signal. That's very good. When uh, I mean, so there's huge win. Yeah. It doesn't help my fiance when she's on call for veterinary uh, emergencies, but oh um, we do run the Wi-Fi during the day to allow Wi-Fi calling to improve that for her business. Totally. But then I shut it down at night. You don't need it. Yeah. Or sleep. There you Why go. I want that. But I love when Jack brought up how guys actually install switches for the main power around the bedroom. So yeah. before you go to bed, you can have, cause there's frequencies coming off of electrical currents as well. Yeah. It's really bad. And even when you kill the, kill the breaker, bad frequencies can still jump on the AC power grid on those wires, which is no bueno. But you know, the, the best you can do to control that is, is really hack your house. We're not going to get into that, but go camping. That's a whole other episode. Sleep outside. Yeah. Go camping, sleep outside, go camping. I mean, that's, it's that easy. Like get in the nature. Yeah. So that's our, our, our lifestyles is hiking, skiing, mountain biking, road cycling, rock climbing, skydiving. Yeah. That's yeah. Exactly. Step. So step four, what you would want to do. Well, you know what? Let's just say also put your phone on airplane mode or keep it off of your body as much as you can. That's great. Three. That's three. Yeah. Or that's part of three. So step four, let's go and say, um, you know, you don't even need to add that, but that's just one of the pieces. I'm just going to give that as a parentheses. Yeah. And you know what else? You don't, one more thing thinking. to throw in is another thing of man-made EMF is artificial light. So just something that's for the listener who, who's keen just don't use artificial lights during the day if you can. So like right now, I mean, maybe it's just for the podcast, but it looks like you've got some lights on in there. But like optimally, we would just not use any artificial lights during the day and just use the natural light coming in from I do try to, but I've actually purposely removed all the energy efficient bulbs in this house. I went back to old school incandescent. That's good. But even then, they still have to find that stuff. It is. And they still have flicker, which is not optimal. But so that's the thing. Step four uh, is get cold. So basically it's, it's pretty simple, but, um, you could even just write get cold or cold exposure. But basically the simplest thing to do is like take a dunk in an ice bath or a cold water bath. Like I have a, a tub, go swimming in your lake, your river, your Creek, go ground barefoot, go do earthing barefoot outside, um, in the cold winter, go step through a Creek, go take a walk in, and walk through the puddles any cold exposure, but especially cold showers or cold bathing is, is fantastic. And if you live near the beach or you live near a lake, the more you can get in there, the healthier you're going to be, the better you're going to feel. This is really important. Yeah. This year I had on, I haven't had him on this month. Uh, we might be changing up the format, but I started bringing on a regular guest co-host from Texas. His name is Travis Rosnos and he's trained and certified in the Wim Hof method. There we go. So he's younger generation like you, but he's um, an advocate. He does. He does like he get, he brings men together and they do all the cold therapy stuff. He puts he, he gets these giant kiddie pools and gets people to submerge in the ice water to teach them all this stuff. So I just did that with uh with Wim Hof in in L.A. He had an event and yep. it was it was pretty cool. So um so that's a huge huge impacts. And then step five, we're gonna move on. It is watch the sunset live in darkness and sleep a full night basically. So just watch sunset. You can do comma darkness, comma good sleep or something like that. And the point of this is that to, to have the other side of our circadian rhythm working well, along with light exposure in the morning and then darkness during the day or sorry, darkness at night. Yeah. We need to have that second piece darkness at night. So Oh yeah. I've got, I've got blacked out drapes in the bedroom now. And, and, um, she still brings her phone to bed because when she's on emergencies, That's I, rough. I leave my phone in here. I've got everything shut down on airplane mode. Everything is off. Uh, but I also make sure that phone is flipped it down. There's nothing coming in emanating in our room. So yeah, I got to adapt yeah. where I can. So. Yeah. Try, try where you can. So, um, that's huge because, to fix, to have the most optimal sleep when it gets dark, we want to just basically live in darkness 
and just use minimal artificial light. Now this is not going to be practical for most people, but the simplest thing you can do is get a pair of blue blockers. That's why we sell them. And then you wear them when you're exposed to artificial light and you're going to sleep better. And if you get into this and it makes more sense to you, eventually you can start using red lights or incandescent lights in your home, making that transition eventually maybe to no lights or less and less light, dimmer light. Eventually you're going to be living out in the sun and using natural light during the day and less and less dim light at night, maybe just candles. I have a friend who, after I spoke with him and his family, they decided they wanted to do all candlelight at their house. And we do a lot of candlelight here better. and, uh, and I got her, she won't wear the hundred percent, but she's willing to wear at least cause she's got bad vision, which I told her we, that can be healed. But, um, mm -hmm. so she's at least rocking 50% blockers now in the evening. So baby steps. Yeah, everybody's at a different place in the timeline. I tell us all the time and you know, we just got to adapt. Yeah. Allow, I'll add, allow, allow people to grow at their pace. So. I'll add one thing about those, uh, those 50% blue blockers is that they probably don't block 50%. I got to be honest with you. The marketing probably. is, is strong, but it's, they're probably oh, the, not. that 50% blocker came from that actual eye doctor who designed them. So I don't, I would like to think that he's doing a better job than most companies. <laughs> yeah, it would be cool to research that because that one might be better than most of them. But just for people to be aware, almost all of the ones on Amazon and on the market, they block like 50% or 100% of a certain range of blue. But the key thing, Scott, to know is that all the lights that emit blue light that are, is harmful, the, the key spike, in especially in LEDs today, is at 455 nanometers of, of a wavelength, right? But all these glasses, they block 50 to 100% up until 440, but they don't block almost anything at 455. And the reason is because that causes there to be a little bit of a color change towards a more yellowish tint, a slight yellow hue, and people don't want that. So they just stay away from that. But in doing so, they're not blocking the key frequencies. That's why I tell people to be aware. The new day lenses we're going to be offering come from a manufacturer called Blue Tech which is uh, one of the best lens manufacturers in the country for blue blocking lenses. They're the gold standard. And so I've got really good deals with them where I can offer them at a pretty solid price to the public. Um, and that's going to be really, really awesome. So that'll be part of our new site coming up in a few weeks, hopefully um, sooner than later. Cool. So anyway, that's, it's simple. I'll and have to, I'll have to give you the link to that eye doctor guy. So it's, it's always important to study. Let's do not, it. I, I wouldn't say not just a competition, but it's like you, you should study each other because that way everybody's leveling up, right? Totally. So it's good to understand what everybody else is doing. Exactly. Um, Let's, I'm down. I'm down. I'll take that link from you and check it out. Yeah. I, that's He's obsessed. I so, so that's, that's a huge deal. And then, and that's pretty much it is the key thing there is like, Scott, you probably also know how this, how this affects your life now that you're aware of it. Like for me, if I don't sleep from, if I don't get 10 hours of sleep, I mean, I'm so young and growing, but if, if I get less than 10 hours of sleep or even less than eight or nine, I just don't feel as amazing as I always do. Like I still feel pretty good today. After well, it's not, it's not even just the quantity though. It's also part of that circadian rhythm is the exactly. consistency, right? So yeah. it's like, you can't be doing 8 PM tonight and then you do 2 AM tomorrow night and then back to 10 PM the next night. Like you're part of that rhythm is the consistency really yeah. trying your best. Cause like I said, last night I was up until 4 AM. I haven't done that in so long. I felt it this morning. I went in and do a hardcore cross workout, but I was like, I was not at my, my best. So totally, totally. So that's the thing. Um, and in regards to the CrossFit workouts, I mean, they only have artificial bad lights in their gyms or the boxes that I've seen. So oh, we've got some, this is in a big old, old, uh, silk mill with massive old warehouse windows. So oh, that's awesome. There, there's, there's some good light coming in, but you that's are right. Great. I mean, Jack and I talked about that too. A lot of CrossFit facilities are kind of closed off. So, um, I have a giant old garage behind my house, like 3000 square feet. And I've got a CrossFit gym space I built in there, but I try and take it outdoors whenever I can. Totally. And that's like for people to know, just if you do your workout indoors under artificial light, you might actually be losing benefit compared to when you do it out in the sun. Just, mm -hmm. just a thing to keep in mind because of the way it affects our engines. Like you might feel good after the workout, you get the adrenaline rush and all the benefits of that immediately. And you look buff and stuff but you're draining mitochondrial capacity and, and shunting mitochondria from the brain and the heart down to the muscles rather than just being out in the sun where you're. That's why I tell people like if you're training in a gym, like some people don't like running, but I'm like go outside and at least do your warm part of your warm up outdoors first. Yeah. Then if you're going to go back into the facility, at least you got that, 
that positive exposure before yeah. and then maybe do a cool down run afterwards to get some more daylight, you know, back into that. Totally. Room. Yeah. So, and even blue blockers while working out would be cool, but you know, that's the thing people are going to have to decide on based on how much they want to want to go all in and, and get the biggest benefits. So the final step is what we were talking about earlier is trust your intuition. So something there had to be for me, one kind of overarching step that would put all the pieces together and trusting your intuition is the most effective because there's going to be lots of questions. You know what? There's two pieces to it. Trust your intuition and have faith. You can add because trusting your intuition is going to allow you to kind of get over the humps and having faith in the process is basically going to, you know, if you don't have faith, someone told me once you're fucked because yeah. And this doesn't have to be religion. No, this is not beyond religion. This is a faith in the process. Faith in this. This is why. That's why. No, no offense. I'm actually. I I love talk about this. I don't even like the word diet because I studied psychology when I did my marketing degree. And a lot of people now, thanks to bad marketing and magazines and, and bro science, the word diet has been thrown around so much. It signifies a short term mindset, and it doesn't establish that lifestyle. The long-term mindset of, dude, I'm not trying to teach you a crash diet. I'm trying to teach you a lifestyle that you could sustain you the rest of your life. So I'm a big advocate of replacing the word diet with lifestyle when properly educated. So yeah, exactly. And I mean, I've thought about changing, thinking of a name like the light lifestyle, but the light diet is, is cool because it's the only diet that I've ever discovered that when you do it, you actually feel better constantly. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard to stick with. So it actually becomes a light lifestyle, even though- well, And from a business diet. standpoint, you are going to get much more out of the SEO using the word diet. So if, if yeah, we're trying well, to really- Yeah, that too. Yeah, if you're trying so, to establish this and really get people to learn about it, yeah, yeah, stick with diet right now. Yeah, totally. And it's fine. And it, But so this is actually the first time I, you know, I, I've told this before, but- First time someone's actually written it down, so I mean, or you know, like this. Thing. Oh, I'm I'm gonna tag you in all this. Don't worry. And then you can yeah. you can Instagram re the repost app, and you can repost this to oh, you. Oh yeah, I will. I will. And um, you can let people know about the show and everything to get people to come and watch it. But it's it's really like this is you asked me to channel the best things I've learned from Dr. Cruz. I mean, everything I've learned from him, most of it is pretty valuable. Um, almost all of it, I'd say. But basically, the best thing that I can pass along to your listener is that all the stuff he talks about in all of his episodes, those are the six steps that actually come of it. And it's, it's really, I mean, you could work grounding earthing into your watch the sunrise, like be barefoot. I mean, we didn't even write that down or mention it. But like don't no, but I do watch the sunrise with shoes on, take them off. It's that easy. But it's, well, it's because, because well, thanks to modern shoe wear and, and fashion, we've become disconnected from the natural frequencies of the earth and, yes. and our bodies at the cellular level are giving off a natural frequency. There's all kinds of, I've had it on a guru from Canada. Um, she has all that EMF technology that you can reprogram yourself with. You put the, the goggles on and you have the mats you lay on and all that stuff. So uh, she's a big advocate for, for re reprogramming yourself to the proper earth frequency using EMF technology. Like the good, yeah. the good, the good EMF technology. But yeah, that, that's 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 another thing that that's a tug of war won't, there because that's we won't man, get into right? now. But that that could be an oxymoron. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because like you, you power. still had to create a generation device to generate that. Yeah, the, so. the the good EMF technology is the sun and the earth barefoot and the cold water. But yeah. anything that's artificial, I'm very skeptical. Well, I can tell you, Tony Robbins has, actually promotes the EMF because he isn't always in the sun, right? Because he does so many presentations, so oh. he's had to hack the totally. process and at least cycle that in because you aren't always outdoors. So, yeah, well there's a, there's some research of the first guys who were in that business to, that show that it really might not be all so good. Like they, they say it is, but yeah, yeah. that's for the individual, make your own decision, read the book, the body electric. And then well, the, the beauty of what you've established here today um, is that this, this light diet that we're going to make sure is tied to you uh, sure. <laughs> is that these are doable things. Like, Spending thousands of dollars on an EMF device? No, like this is all consumable and easily adaptable in, in totally. days and weeks. So it's really simple, actually. And if you do it, like even if you only get the sun in the morning and spend some time outdoors, like fifteen to thirty minutes is pretty much all you need, really. But more would be, you know, more throughout the day. Like we said, live outdoors is better. But basically, you're gonna feel it. And then if you use less light at night, like the only thing that 
the only thing that my, one of my friends, a good friend I just made down in San Diego did with his family, the only thing they really changed was uh, using candles at night. And they have had huge benefits. So if, if someone only does one of these steps, you like the Wim Hof people, they only do cold and, and a little bit of, you know, they don't focus on sun and the benefits well, of light. Everybody but, has their niche, you know? Yeah. But, but if you notice know, though, most of his still, cold water therapy is outdoors. Mm-hmm, that's true. And, so. and that's a huge benefit. So they do get outdoors, even if it's not the intention. Same thing, eating seafood and spring water. So many studies show the benefits of seafood, but you don't want to eat the artificial omega-3 supplements because they're full of, um, they're full of not good stuff. There's one uh, molecule that I was just actually learning about. Dr. Cruz talked all about it. Um, aldehydes, the, the artificial omega-3 pills, they yeah. become oxidized and so on. So literally people who eat those fish oil pills, you're taking in some fats that literally go into the right into the places in your cells and nervous system where they the real stuff is supposed to be, and then becomes easily oxidized and damaged. So like that stuff is no bueno, basically the, the artificial supplements. Okay. Just so people know that, you know, you can't replace the seafood step with uh, the pills pretty much all of this. You can't replace, Like you could get a red light therapy light to do your, you know, extra, Yep. But you can't replace sun. You can add it and it might help, but you won't be able to fully replace. So well, I think anyway. for a lot of people hearing this is start making some of these steps and, and learn. It's, and then adapt as you can. Like You don't have to do all this immediately, but it's like start taking the steps. Yeah, this analogy that you've – thank you, man. I appreciate you helping me figure out the analogy with the car because yeah. I never understood the engine and I didn't have someone to talk with. But dude, well, and honestly, the better hack for that is like find out a do some find out another wrench head that is more knowledgeable than even I am. I, I just happen to you know do my first motor swap at sixteen. Because no, I, you're pretty good, man. I, 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 I hit a with a car. <laughs> you got the health perspective, so you saw where I was coming from. You might be the perfect guy to help fine tune the analogy, so I can. Uh, hey, teamwork makes a dream work. So that's yeah, another, that's another fun saying I have. Well, listen, man, we went super long for him today. So yeah, and this, totally is, cool. this is a holiday weekend. So I want to, I want to make sure you get back to your family since you're still. Yeah, like, totally. I'm going to roll out and get back in the sun and hang with the fam. But um, uh, you the are family. the guest co-host. So that means you get some final words. You've already been quite knowledgeable today, but is there a short way you'd like to kind of sum up everything we discussed here today? Or is there just a, a, a perf- purposeful statement you want to leave behind for the audience? If they forget everything else we talked about, uh, but it's like, Hey, you know what? This is what, you know, this is what Rob's all about. This is what Matt's all about. Like, dude, just what are some final words you want to leave behind for the audience? Totally, totally. Um, well, one thing I'll throw in is people can just check out robdix.io. You can check out mattmaruka.com. And I, my goal as an individual is to teach these messages and the way people can be healthy through nature, like those fundamental ideas of mitochondria, like this guy with Dr. Wallace has researched, and make it applicable and useful for people. And I'm just getting started. I'm 19, so this is going to evolve very far over time. This is just the beginning. Um, the other thing that I would just throw out that's more purposeful is a quote that has been helping me a lot. Cause I'm still in, you know, like I don't got it all figured out. I don't pretend no one. I mean, I hope no one who's, we all never have everything tends to figure out. to have it figured out. Right. Yeah, exactly. But, um, one, th- this quote that helps me a lot and has helped me figure out when I'm feeling lost to move forward. It's from, uh, Seneca the old stoic philosopher. Mm -hmm. And he said, if one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind can be favorable. In other words, find where you at least directionally want to go. Do you want to go to Africa, Asia, Europe, Antarctica? And then you at least have a, a general destination. I mean, the more specific we can kind of tailor what we want, the more likely we're going to end up closer to there, or at least we have something to work towards so that then we might learn, Oh, I actually want to go here, but at least you had somewhere you were going instead of just like wandering. So I'm trying to apply that more in my life, but I found that like the more I can become perfectly fixed on what I want. And two, three years ago when I was really not feeling well, it was, I want my health. I want to feel fantastic. Now it's like, I want to use this information, make a business and be successful and wealthy and then after that, well, or, you know, that'll happen in time, do what I love and at the same time focus on business. But then I want to focus on how can I have a big impact and, and share this? You know what I mean? Well, that's, that's the, that, that is your 
establishing the key word of legacy. What is the legacy we're leaving behind in this world? That is the bigger picture, but to your point, cool. you got to lay the groundwork. Cool and word. <laughs> Very yeah. cool word. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're far ahead of your time, sir. So Thank you, Scott, I appreciate it. It's good to chat. I'm really glad we got to do this because I, I told you we were going to have some fun. So, uh, and it, <laughs> usually the more fun we have, the more long form, the long form, the episodes of being, but hang tight. I'm going to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Totally. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I've said multiple times on the show, really, we obviously focused a lot on the raw optics, but, uh, his core brand site you can get to, which gets you over to the, that site too, is you go to Matt, Maruka.com. So M A T T M A R U C A.com. Uh, we're going to be tagging all this stuff like we always do all over social media once the episode comes up. Again, it's all over YouTube. You can watch all of this. You can see the screen sharing we did. All the influencers that we discussed today, Dr. Wallace, Dr. Cruz, all that stuff's always going to be linked in the blog post show notes. Uh, the, the quote that Matt shared today, we put all this in. So just go to livingfuel.com and you'll find everything you need. And again, all the sites and all the ways to follow Matt will also be on there as well. And real quick, you can actually follow him on Instagram too. It's at Matty, M-A-T-T-Y, triple underscore M, if you uh, want to see some of his Yeah, questions. I might I might change that eventually, but we'll, I, I we'll won't talk about that for the listener because <laughs> I want to make it something a little more- uh, you know, brand, <laughs> brand associative, so. Yeah, exactly. It's just, uh, but, you know, then again, if you do good stuff and you're like, you know, the basketball player on the, uh, whatever, this, the, the Bulls, uh, I forget his name, but his- it's like stickity is his Instagram. Oh, Michael Jordan? Joakim Noah. Oh, the newer ones, guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like stickity is his at, at stickity. So it's like if, you're, if, you're, if you do enough good stuff, it doesn't matter how vague your Instagram is. People will follow you. But anyway, I get what you're saying. Yeah, no worries. Good point. So, but anyway, so guys, in touch. follow Matt and you're going to have some fun. You're going to learn more about healthy lifestyle, especially from powerful influencers like Jack Cruz because he's definitely influenced me. And it's cool to see an advocate uh, like Matt out there spreading the good word too. So again, ladies and gentlemen, long form today, we really overly fueled your health, your business, and your lifestyle. So thanks for tuning in to another powerful Live the Fuel show. Remember, if this knowledge impacted you, please share it. And please give us a review. I want to hear how things are going. Uh, it's been two and a half years and we're still pumping along. So again, thanks for tuning in to another Live the Fuel show. Have a great holiday. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks, Scott.